Imagine karaoke for a song you thought you knew and there's money on the line. Like, you know how you watch the words on the karaoke and you're like, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and then your brain says, I don't remember that. <laughs> when, did, when did we sing that? What part of the song is that? And you start getting off key or you're singing like, and you miss a word. That's ADR. Hi, this is Sean Gann, Crunchyroll ADR director for such titles as Buddy Daddies, The Apothecary Diaries, and Kaiju Number 8. And you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga. Aloha, everybody. I am your host, Lehua Superfina. We like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds. Joining us today is the incredible, talented Arif S. Kinchin, a renowned actor, musician, voice actor, and charity streamer. Arif's impressive career spans across various media platforms from memorable on-screen performances in films like The Wash and Christmas in Captain to lending his versatile voice to iconic characters in beloved franchises such as Transformers, Robots in Disguise, and Saints Row. With a passionate for creativity and a heart for giving back, Arif is also a co-founder of the ASK Blood Drive, a platform that combines his love for entertainment with charitable endeavors. Today, we delve into Arif's journey, insights, and experiences as a multifaceted artist and advocate. Welcome, Arif, to Podcast Across Worlds. What's up, y'all? Hello, hello. Aloha. <laughs> How are you guys doing? So, we were kind of talking about yes. your name before we started the podcast. Can you tell us the story behind your name? My name is actually pronounced Arif. It is Arabic. It is, uh, you know, mainly something that you would hear like in the United Arabs. But now I have found out that it is very famous in India as well as the Philippines. But growing up, it was only me and Arif Mardin, <laughs> the guy most famous for Shaka Khan and Nora Jones. So that it's a great name. And it means I thought it meant to know. It means I know. So that makes you sound narcissistic, but I didn't write my name. They told me that. So that's what it is. <laughs> now, actually, in Hawaii, there's a very popular name it is Kainoa. Mm. And it's if you say it like in a sentence, it's Kainoa and mm-hmm. it means the name. <laughs> so there are many men out there whose name is the name. I am the name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is the name. Uh, but most likely, it's a shortened version of a very long name that's actually a sentence. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. It, it reminds me, uh, you know, as trivial or as fantastic and uh, based in fantasy as Wakanda can be. I mm. love the fact of, tell me who you are. <laughs> like, I love that. <laughs> I am such and such, such and such, such and such. I, I've always thought that was so beautiful to mm. have something behind your name. And I am the son of such and such and such and such and such and such. It's like, when you know your lineage, it goes good. <laughs> yeah, literally, there are some Hawaiian names that are like that. It'll be like a sentence of, I am the child of... And it'll like be everybody in the family. But that's how, that's perfect. I mean, we're we're all eternal reflections of those that have come before us, and mm-hmm, we're the whisper mm-hmm. we're the whispers of our future. So that's a good thing. I like yeah. how you said it like that because in Hawaii, a lot of us are like, man, they cut off our name on the birth certificate on our social security card <laughs> you're like oh i love that it's so spiritual and we're over here like ah. <laughs> well it's very uh, refreshing to get your perspective <laughs> i i went to the doctor to name and uh, today and they always cut off a letter of my middle name and i'm like come on bro come on bro it's been 25 years <laughs> can't even put, put my but it's okay it's okay that's why I go by it. That's why I use my initial for for a uh, public because <laughs> it's like <laughs> you won't put my in- the one letter makes the name sound different, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now for the public, how did you start your journey in acting and voice acting? What motivated you to pursue these careers? I would say 
a pretty girl, sixth grade. Uh, I no. LD, she knows who she is. <laughs> uh, a black girl from England. Uh, in my sixth grade year, and I knew barely anyone from England, so I was enamored. Uh, and we did a play called The Music Man. She got a part in there, so I wanted to be in the play as well. Maybe it could help my chances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but by being in the play, I unlocked something. Uh, we had to dance, we had to sing remember lines and be here by this time, be there. And then we also uh, performed at graduation. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was very like, I think I like this. They clapped. I think they like what I did. That's cool. All right. I want to do this some more. <laughs> so the music man at my elementary school because of a girl is what got me started. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> And then did you just join like drama or join like a theater club outside of school? Like oh, no. how did you There's no money for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child of the eighties. <laughs> I grew up in a house full of women, three women working jobs, busting their butts. So uh I ended up going to uh a school uh for seventh grade. That was a, it was called an international school. So uh, various races, they, we learned French. Uh, we were taught gymnastics by an Indian family from uh, New Delhi. And um, we did different things. It was, it was different. It was more making you a better person than just education. Mm -hmm, but there was, mm -hmm. there was a lot of math, a lot of math. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we, uh, there was a, a, we, they called them on, they called it an oratorical competition. So you would do speeches and my teacher, Mr. Bogus wanted to, uh, have some kids do Martin Luther King. And he started playing it in, in, uh, the room. And I started making the sound, like, I guess, sounding enough like it. But I was playing around because I've always been a mimic. I've been a mimic of accents and things like I pick it up pretty quick. And he was like, okay, that's you. You're going to do it. I was like, no, no, I was goofing off. I was just playing. <laughs> and he made it my assignment. He made it my task. And it uh, sent me to some drama festivals, a couple of competitions. I, I placed pretty well. They had me perform it at another person's graduation uh, and it kept me, it kept me going most junior high, early high school mm -hmm. to be able to do it. So, and then because of that, it made me not just speak the words, you know, kids get up in front. Martin Luther King said, da -da 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 -da. it forced me to learn to speak like Martin and to dress the part and to stand at the podium and to deliver the speech. And to use the inflections. And they were like, this guy's in seventh grade. He might be a problem. <laughs> so I left from that school. And then I got into a drama program. And that's where we learned that I know how to do comedy. <laughs> because I wasn't so good at the drama as I wanted to be. <laughs> what was it that made them go, aha, it's comedy? Um. I think Othello is supposed to be a tragedy. <laughs> but uh, when you can make an audience laugh, not laugh because, oh, I fell or I forgot something, but the face I made, very Jim Carrey <laughs> style. <laughs> very, like, you know, no child should be up that late, but I watched a lot of Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase on SNL. Garrett Morris, mm -hmm. of course, but more John Belushi because he was so absurd. And then Eddie Murphy and um, the the whole uh, whole people, Joe Piscopo. And there, there's a young lady I can't remember who's very freak. Gilda Radner, uh, people like that. And then Lily Tomlin. So that's inside of you and you and your friends are walking around the neighborhood doing stuff. 
So you're like, hey, why don't you love me? <laughs> it's like, no, this is not appropriate. <laughs> you're supposed to say, why don't you love me? Am I not a man? And I'm like, why don't you love me? Am I not a man? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> always on my own beaten path. <laughs> <laughs> always doing it my way. <laughs> but uh, it scored us some points. Uh, we did it the right way at the drama festivals. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the last round, I think maybe fatigue set in. And one of the one of the judges pulled me to the side and said, you should really look at comedy. She said, oh. she said, you blew this audit. She said, you blew this trial. Like, like, like this round, this round you're not going to place uh but you're really funny you're naturally funny you should look into it and i was like oh okay and i was you know i was sad and then went back to school and then i did the same thing and then uh, people were laughing but whatever whatever and then uh high school is when uh the wheels came off and everything started going different whoa so you're pretty much directed to a path before high school that's really early yeah you know you you don't realize it until you're older and you start looking back at your life like there was a lot of people like giving you good advice and being kind when they could have been very dismissive you know what i'm saying they they could have been like oh get away kid you're troublesome Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case so i i i am a fan and an advocate for public school out in l.a I'm a very big advocate for it. Is it because of your experiences in junior high and high school? My because... wife and I and uh <laughs> and my friends from junior high that my wife has been on record saying, I don't understand how they're all still friends. It's like we I don't know. Uh I just love them all and uh <laughs> we had a great experience for my two years. <laughs> We had a great experience, and I think it was just a different time. I think through Gen X, you'll find Mm -hmm. a lot of people who have known each other since elementary or junior high. You know, you find you find your tribe, Mm -hmm. and it's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you want to have your tribe that is uh, hereditary, but sometimes on your travels, you bring other people into the village, and they do well. And mm-hmm. you, keep, you keep them, you keep them, you hold them and you grow and you raise your children together and you make a family. And then during your journey, when did you realize that you could make a career out of acting? Uh, house party. House working party. Like, working on, yeah, I was in house party. I, I did that uh, between, uh, so 10th grade, so 15 So, uh, left 10th grade that summer, uh, ended up working on house party and I feel that, uh, that's what changed me. It changed me forever. And being around hip hop icons and dancing and getting money for it. I thought Mm -hmm. I was rich. We were making like $60 a day. I thought I was rich. (laughs) <laughs> Ooh, sixty dollars a day, bro. <laughs> Cash 60, up front. <laughs> yeah, sixty times five, man. <laughs> what? Three hundred dollars every week. Oh, and it was like, uh, I want to believe we worked a solid month, maybe a month and a half, but I want to believe a solid month. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of money for a sixteen. You, you mean fifteen year old? You're having fun. On a mm-hmm. on a lot, you're going. You now have money coming. You uh, are being directed. You're hearing songs before anybody will hear them, and you're learning without it being forced down your throat. I learned about ADR and about uh, 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 lighting and uh, different camera angles while being paid. It was great. It was great. How did you learn about ADR while being paid? Were you uh, working with studios or productions? Well, no. And... It, it happened on House Party. I tell people, and as, as I know, there's a lot of uh, filming that goes on in Honolulu. So, like, when you're there, 
don't get caught up with, oh, it's so cool. I'm working on this thing. And you're talking mm -hmm. to everybody and you're hanging, you're chatting. Pause. Look around and see what's happening around you. Start start stealing information like steal, like, hey, mm. wh why? Why do we have to be quiet when we're filming? Oh, so that we can get a clean take. And then we go in and we do ADR later and uh, we'll probably do some uh, some crowd noise at the end of this scene. Oh, OK, cool. Thank you, bro. Hey, why, why, why do we have to like start from here as opposed to right over there? Oh, we want to see you guys in the background. So it looks like real life is happening. That's why we put you back there and then we'll put you up front or we may have you walk from another angle to make the scene look full. Uh, and it's like, oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. And, uh, mm. you know, different things like, Hey, why you got to put powder on my hair? So like, oh, cause you start sweating. So we want you to look like it's a cool day. And it's hot right now, so we're going to keep patting you and putting little powder on to keep it lighting. Like, okay. And you start learning and you start understanding, oh, okay, all these things go in. And mm -hmm. then you start learning. You start learning about child labor laws, too. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share some of your most memorable experiences or projects from both your on screen acting and voice acting work? Very first memorable has to be House Party. It's a cult film. It is the, if not, it's not the first, but it's the most popularized hip hop film that was like, so it's like mainstream it was the first. So I was happy about that. I got to meet Martin Lawrence, Rosie Perez, the great late Robin Williams, uh, even uh, AJ Johnson, uh, Anthony Johnson. He passed away. His father's actually who got me in to doing it. A lot of people would know him as Ezel from Friday. Uh, and I got to hang out with the far side before they were the far side. So that was super fun. And we got to film it in L.A. So when it came out in L.A., it, changed, it, it made everybody feel electric. And I guess take notice that maybe we could do something like this. This might work. Uh, mm -hmm. for, voice, for voiceover, I would say the best first thing was doing professor rocket for crash box because i was Ooh. getting paid i was able to imitate chris rock the whole time they thought i was funny and uh one of the cast members of sctv was my uh uh director so it was just great and you know it it was it was just really fun. It was like, oh my god, I, this is my first series. It didn't go anywhere after that, but it's still like a good twenty episodes that I'm responsible for in America because the person that did it initially was in Canada and there were rules. Can't, wow. can't do it. Yeah, so that that being my first made it the most memorable. And, and I used to have hair. I used to have hair. So my wife pressed my hair and it was down to here and it was it was feathery. I felt I felt very, very, very DJ quick. Uh, <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> and then what have been the most fulfilling moments in your acting and voice acting career? Fulfilling would have to be Sparks. Uh, you. It's a TV show that people may not have ever heard of, but for me, it was life-changing because you're a cast member you're on the call sheet every day you have mm -hmm. lines you have scenes and you get to work with james avery from the fresh prince you're working with robin givens from boomerang and head of the class you're working with terrence howard before he's terrence howard you're working with miguel nunez who did uh his show, he filmed it in Hawaii, uh, uh, the, the, the military show. I'm sorry, Miguel, don't get mad at me. But he's so <laughs> uh, freaking amazing. He's the first black person to die in Friday the 13th. So it's like pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're dealing with uh, Kim Whitley every day before she's Kim, before she's this juggernaut of a comedian. You, you're working with her when she's raw and and everything's coming together and it was just a special time mm -hmm. because as you may remember they they had us segregated on tv but 
I liked it like that. You could always go get a job on one of the black shows. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. great to be on the mainstream show, but it's like, oh, you can get a job on the Latino show because you're Latin. You can get a job on a black show if you're a minority. And you might luck up and get on the regular show. You know what I'm saying? But more mm-hmm. times you, you might work like four to one, four to one on a minority show than you would in mainstream. So I kind of miss it, but I'm happy that things have progressed and we have people that are of color, pe- like POCs that are mm-hmm. in the lead and doing things. So, you know, progress has cost. <laughs> uh, and then uh, voiceover wise, Saints Row, it changed my life. It it will never it. There will be roles that will be bigger. There will be roles that will be more important. There will mm-hmm. never be saints row and the initial vibe check that occurred amongst that and how people have gravitated to that game for so long and still Mm. to this day and it it matters it matters a lot it's a special time uh and just you know we were there we were there for the xbox so you know (laughs) xbox and xbox 360 you know i can claim that (laughs) I've had I've had two I've had two ga- I've had two no three games on no four so I've had I had a uh, a game on the Xbox and of course with Saints Row then I had Saints Row for Xbox 360 and then for Xbox Series X we have the rest of the Saint Rows so it's like yeah man and then for the new one then we got uh Starfield so it's like I've had one at every launch it's good I feel good <laughs> Can you uh, tell us your journey with Saints Row? Like, how did you learn about the casting and when you were doing the recording and then seeing it, hearing it in the game? Okay, so almost every audition that we do is like, we're just, just starting to get real names because you know everything is data sensitive no one wants it, the information to get out before it gets out like mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of people auditioning for a new generation of a game that is very very popular that hasn't made a new one in the last 10 years i'll say no more uh mm-hmm. the, the name of the company <laughs> rhymes with an energy drink company <laughs> uh so you know you just you get the audition and you're reading it and you're like oh but that's because we have social media and we have all kind of, you know, YouTube and everything before it was just, okay, video game from this company. All right. Character, Mm -hmm. this character does this, this character talks like that. Uh, you might, you might get a piece of art. You might get like a black and white, um, outline. You won't get like a fully colorized picture. You just get like an outline. And then okay. you just you just read it and you 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 try it again, and at that time we would go into the agency. So we had booth operators. Nah, try it again, Arif. Oh, that one's different. That's kind of cool. Well, let's try something different. So you get it that way, mm. and then, excuse me, then you uh, send it out. And they choose and then you get in the booth and you switch it around and you find the actual what they want and then you keep moving. And that's how we did Saints Row. Uh, It was a Saints Row one. I did city people voices like, why are you walking past me? Mm. You better get in your car. Like a lot of NPC stuff. Yeah. And then they gave us the audition for this and then we did it. And I tell you, honestly. I went to the session thinking I was doing some more NPC stuff because mm-hmm. you, you you have to forget stuff. If you don't forget it, it'll eat you alive. <laughs> like like literally with, 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 uh, with auditions, especially voiceover auditions. So, so on camera auditions. OK, you get three auditions a week, right? OK, so voiceover, mm-hmm. you may get 15 in a week. When things are going good in the town, when things are going right and all the stars align, you might get 15. Whoa. Um, same thing for on camera. You may get those three if things line up, or you may have an audition every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second. <sighs> I woke up early. <laughs> Take my kids to school. <laughs> I was up very early. Um, 
Uh, so you 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 do your audition, you give it your best, and then you get there, and you, the director, maybe the writer, usually, hopefully, the writer's there that can tell you more about it, and mm-hmm. you start to you start to flush it out, and then if you're if you're blessed enough, oh, we want to bring you back for the next version of the game. Okay, let me hear what I sounded like before. Has he grown up a little bit? Okay, well, let's keep him going, and then every time you get more information, now you're more familiar with it. Now, mm-hmm. he, now you're feeling it a little bit more. So Saints Row 2, which is my most raw, compared to Agents of Mayhem, it's totally different. It's totally mm-hmm. different because he's grown. He's done different things. Agents of Mayhem, we took him a little bit back to the original, but I had grown. So we weren't able to capture exactly but a variation of the original character and more more of the attitude Ooh, yeah wow so you're still able to grow with this character yeah and develop like a backstory to him and really portray him through the game Mm -hmm. and the brotherhood and sisterhood of the uh, team the, 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 uh, I heard somebody, I, I don't know if I can say it out loud, but somebody that worked on the project said very clearly, we're the Fast and Furious, but a video game. And I was like, oh, 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 that makes sense. So they were like, everything that's so absurd in a car, we're just doing in the video game. We're just going to be absurd. We're going to do things that... Like almost like they prophesized that they were going to go into space. They were like, "We're just going to do wild stuff. We're going to go into space. We're going to go here. We're going to do things. We're going to do that. We're going to do." I'm like, "I thought we were gangsters in Steelport. What happened? I thought we were in Stillwater. What happened?" <laughs> but everything you're reading, you're like, "Oh hell yeah! Oh <laughs> hell yeah! If a gangster can end up being president, what? Yes, hell yeah!" So you just always like. You're jumping, you're jumping in the pool half dressed and you forgot you had your phone on you. Like, whatever, whatever. You just get in there and just do it. Cause it feels right. As someone with diverse experience in voice acting across commercials, video mm. games, and animated series, how do you approach each type of project differently? I I wish there was a clinical way of of stating it but everything starts with the words i read the words and i i I try to listen to it i had an acting teacher tell me chip fields actually uh kim fields mom uh taught us to not try to act it she said read it don't act read the words grasp the words If it takes one, if it takes two reads, grasp the words. Now, what do those words mean? Then start acting. We're not afforded that kind of time sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday, my son had a uh, a turn a a a a a, 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 a semifinal for uh for volleyball. So I had an hour. So I had to read through the copy and then it turned out that it was three different scripts. So it's like, oh, okay, I got to read through the copy, make sense of it, record it, edit it, save it, record it, edit it, save it, record it, edit, save it, and then send it. Uh, and I made it work, but I've done it for a long time. Now, mm. before I would have had to go in somewhere to do it. This gave me an hour to knock it out and give it my best. When it comes to any medium, they're going to give you directions. They're going to say things like, okay, this is a friend next door that has gone to school with you for the last 10 years and your families are like family, but you've always been jealous of this friend and so on and so forth. They give you something and that's for the regular acting stuff uh, or even, even video games that give you stuff like that. Commercials are more specific and they say things that almost sound contradictory. This is Mm. a boy next door who can sell the product, but he's not a salesman, 
We don't want smeary professional, but we want a guy next door, almost like a friend that you would call on the phone that would give you advice about the product. But he, you need to be very well spoken and able to articulate the brand's thought uh, and, and imagery, but also have fun and not be too stoic. And you're like, Dude, just Pretend say you're you talking to, to your friend and just you're selling this you to want. them. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but it's like they give you this jargon. Uh, very famously, there was, uh, I think, the very first cancel culture of, uh, I think it was Gilbert Gottfried got canceled because uh, of something he said. And they were replacing Affleck. I don't believe he died. I might be stupid. He might. Did he die out? I don't think so. I think it's something he said and did because it was a huge hullabaloo. But remember, he did Aflac. That was his voice. Mm -hmm, so they mm -hmm. wanted to change him. They gave us three and a half actual pages of information of what it means and how it should evoke an emotion and how to uh make it feel real to say Affleck. Shut the front door. Three no. And, three and a half pages. Older guys, veteran, veteran guys, uh uh people very famous from TV, couple of us, new guys, every race, every every race that had more of like a middle ground voice. Uh, mm -hmm. pe pe people that, you know, horribly so, but people that could non accentually say the words. So no accent would really come out, but a fun demeanor would, would present itself. Bro, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my god dang life. <laughs> we were just sitting there like, and like, I mean, like, okay, so if you go take a quiz and you're in the class, and it's right before the test and your teacher's allowing you to kind of look at it before she says start. And you're looking at it like, bro, what did you, did, did you, did you see? And everybody's like, <laughs> so that, that was very funny. And it I... also is disturbing because you start getting in your own way. Cause you're trying, I want to give you every, it's like to just. You got to breathe in, breathe out, as we say. Breathe in, breathe out, and just say the words. Say the words. Go home. Remember I said you got to forget a lot more? You, you have to let yeah. things go. It's like, record it, go home. Go home. <laughs> Don't. I wonder if I said, Aflac. 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 It's like, dude, bro, 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 bro. Three. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> you literally just saw that commercial, and it was the one where he's playing like Pictionary or uh, that game. What mm -hmm. is it called when you're doing emotions? Yes. Whatever. Uh, he was saying Affleck so many times. <laughs> and that and that is the new. That's the new guy. That's the new guy. <laughs> Praise God for him. So happy. They might have changed him again. I don't even know. But it's just like. It, it 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 was a fool's errand, but I mean, a lot of famous animation people, as well as veteran, act we were all in that same room at my agency. So I can't even imagine what it was everywhere else, because everybody knew like this is going to be a pot of gold. <laughs> and then, what do you enjoy the most about taking on a variety of roles? I like the fact of being able to switch up, move around, and all the different mediums and have fun. Uh, going back to fulfilling, being able to be a narration person for a show called, um, it was a science show that we did and, uh, I'd have to look it up. Yeah, that's right. They put me in the wrong category on this show. They put me <laughs> as additional crew. It's okay. Uh, where is it? I do apologize. No, it's totally no. fine. It was the quick and the curious, most fascinating thing I've done ever because it was like I finally got to embody the kind of person that's like, 
why do flies move the way they move? It's like that voice, that guy, you know, when you're a kid and you're watching Sesame Street and the commercials mm-hmm. come on, or like you're watching PBS because you're with your nana and you're hanging out with her. And <laughs> she said, well, you can watch that channel. And it's like, the guy's like, when we went to the lake, we noticed that the wood had started to warp. Why would trees do that when they're near a lake? And you're like, I was like, I get to teach somebody's kid, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's stuff like that that makes all the different mediums matter. Uh, you get to do animation. You love it. Mm-hmm. And then you forget until you see your kid's face. And you're like, I'm, I'm going to be somebody's memory. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. I'm, I'm adding to this kid's visualization of their fantasy. I'm sonically helping them make sense of this animated world and they're getting to hear it. To this day, I, I've i had time of being around Mr. Cummings, but I love Winnie the Pooh. I don't care how old I am. Winnie the Pooh is always going to melt my heart and make me just pause and look and just say, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, you know, the thing that's so nice is these guys that are legends, they always tell you, like, come on, man, you do good work, too. And it's like, yeah, yeah, thank you. I've trained because I followed your example. You guys showed us how to do this the right way. So animation and uh, ADR and voice match has been such a fantastic thing Uh, working on. Remember the Titans? And learning about learning more about segregation and seeing how they were going to weave this all together into a kumbaya moment through a mm. hard time in the South and Denzel being the lead. That was fascinating. And the fact that they allowed me to do 85 percent of the white football players was even better. It's like. I I didn't have to just be one thing. I can do everything, and mm. being a, being allowed to do that is always fascinating. It's always fascinating to be allowed to go further and to try different things. So, what challenges have you faced in your career, and how have you tackled them? Bills, light bills. Cable bills, uh, mortgage, and gasoline, gasolina, and grocery bills. Those are all my challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Real life challenges. <laughs> Those are my only cha- Those are my oppressors. <laughs> <laughs> Spectrum cable. Ah, oh, you hate me. Uh, <laughs> um, well, you know. Like I said, originally they had parts that were for the minority that were specific. And Mm -hmm. then they opened it up to everybody. And then also different groups didn't want people being culture vultures. And why should you be able to do this over here and not? And like I just told you, I was doing all these white characters. So I was like, whatever. But Mm -hmm. truthfully... You know, when you're a POC, it would be better to have a POC doing you. Mm-hmm. It, but it kind of cuts down a little bit of the variety of the roles. And it's better that it does. Because people that are uh, of that, that are people of color and that don't have so many chances, at least... For sure, they have this as their thing. They get this mm. as their thing so that when you walk in, everybody that's Lat- Latin gets a chance to go for that guy. Everybody's black gets to go for this guy and so on and so forth. So it's good. But then even better, people that are indigenous, people that are of, of you know Samoa, people that are Pan-Pacific mm-hmm. Islanders, people that are Asian, they get to go for their roles. And it's not like, even though we all enjoy them, it's not like Sunday Kung Fu theater. <laughs> it's not some guy, <laughs> it's, not, it's not some some European guy like, yeah, I think this would sound good. Does that sound Chinese, Skip? Yeah, that sounds Chinese to me. <laughs> 
hey, you know, hey, I, I remember someone telling me like, <laughs> and he didn't say it to be offensive, but un unbeknownst to him, uh, I guess they call them microaggressions today. Like, oh yeah, I, 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 I can, I can talk like like the black guys. Watch, and <laughs> and, and and he was actually pretty good. It was pretty good, but it was just like, <laughs> is that how you think we sound? Okay, that does sound like a couple of my friends, not all of them, but okay, okay. And that was my revenge with uh, Remember the Titans. I made them all sound Southern, all of them, every single one of them. <laughs> but I didn't dumb them down because I don't want to go that far. That's not right. <laughs> mm, mm. They can't be yeah, responsible actually... for their elders. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually interesting because I was talking to someone and they were doing dubbing mm -hmm. for a Chinese character and it was a group of Chinese characters and he was the last one and he noticed that his accent was slightly different from the others. Mm -hmm. And he was wondering, like, oh, is this a real Chinese accent? I mean, I'm just copying my dad. Yeah. And... Because and it's not he, a monolith. Because it's not a monolith. So he was right. <laughs> and then he found out that his dad lived in Australia. And so his Chinese accent had Australian accent in it too. So oh, it wasn't a Chinese American. It was a Chinese Australian. <laughs> the plot thickens. Uh, I think that's dope. I think that's hella dope. Honestly, I think that's dope as all get out. I think it's very cool. I think it's randy, as the kids would say. Uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> uh, Australian Asian. Right? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Do you mean like our friend from e <laughs> our friend from the Daily Show? <laughs> you remember that's his claim to fame. He's like, I'm from Australia, brother. <laughs> I, I love him. I can't remember his name right now, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I freaking love that guy. Now he has his Old Spice commercials. But that's that's the other thing I'm talking about. Now the, it's opened up where everybody's getting a shot, but at the same time, some of the particular stuff has been wound down. But it also makes you rise as a performer to do better and to mm -hmm. be better because look at Lupin. Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought Lupin the Third would turn into Lupin on Netflix? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember watching Lupin the Third on Adult Swim. So it's like when I saw it, I was like, <laughs> I was like, is this a different one? Am I am I missing something? <laughs> I said, wait a minute, they let the, okay, wait a minute, let me watch this show. Wait a minute, who is this dude? I said, oh, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm not gonna say nothing if they're not gonna say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And that was an amazing show. Hey, like, man. It, it it is. He's an amazing. He he's he's a brilliant talent, man. He's a brilliant talent, and it it it's very cool to see people of a certain hue from other places that don't that still don't talk like you. That's super cool. That is mm -hmm. like bravo to Netflix for that one reason: being able to see all of us, but everywhere else. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, there's more of us. There's more of us other places. <laughs> and the dubbing, it matched so well. I was dubbing blown away. Dubbing is hard. Dubbing yeah. is hard. <laughs> dubbing is hard for anime, but it's animated. Dubbing for a human being. And Speaking respectfully. Speaking a different language. And, but doing it respectfully. <laughs> Like I said, not like Kung Fu theater, doing it where it keeps the integrity and the intent. It's a new skill set. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that on um, Snap a Cash. Snap a Cash was the, was was very good for that. Dutch Swit is it Dutch or is it Switz? I think it's Dutch, but it was super super dope to be with them to do that. Then, as of late, doing the hijacking of Flight 615. That's Columbia. Mm. Is, it, is it 615? Come on, man. Don't mess this up. Hold on. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't want to mess this up. I want to make sure I give the hijacking of Flight 601. 601. Yes. Yes. That's, that's it. Yes. So that was fascinating. Fascinating. 
and hard and hard to not fall into the accent. Remember I told you I'm a mm. mimic. I'm a mimic. I grew up with Guatemalan, Filipino, uh, uh, Mazatlan, Chinese, Japanese, Jamaican, Filipino. Mm. So it's like there's a lot of stuff in me. <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't do it from trying to make fun. I did it as what I thought to be a conversa a conversational cooling like to make it not so hard when I was speaking to the first generation at the liquor store or the first generation at the market or the first generation at the food place. I thought I was helping to bring it down and show that I respected what they were going through and they, and they were kind enough to not slap me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they think, you know, but they were, they were nice enough to not slap me, but I don't think I ever did it with the intent to make fun and they could and they could understand that that I wasn't trying to make fun of them. Can you share with us your experience with that? From what I understand with dubbing is that there's the translation and then someone does the time coding and then someone does the adaptation of the script. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the voice actor. Yes. Or, and then there's a director. What was yes. it like? It is exactly like that, but to to make it even simpler than that, imagine karaoke for a song you thought you really knew. Mm -hmm. And there's money on the line. Imagine karaoke for a song you thought you knew and there's money on the line. Like, you know how you watch the words on the karaoke and you're like, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then your brain says, I don't remember that. <laughs> when did When did we sing that? What part of the song is that? And you start getting off key or you're singing like, and you miss a word. That's ADR. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's on, it's on a, on a thin line like this. So it's like, like, a almost like a measuring tape. It's mm. on that thin. So it goes by, Dang. it goes by like that. So it's like beep, beep, beep. And then the words start. And then there's symbols that we know that are like, or, uh, or <clears throat> like the symbols for that. And then mm -hmm. the word might be, come on. So it'd be like, come on. And then it'll look really small. So it'd be like, big cut and then mon, smaller. And you're reading it and you're doing the script and then you're holding for the other person. And you know what? That doesn't fit. Okay, how do we say this? And then Arif, how, how would you say it regular? And it's like, sometimes you interject. Sometimes the writer is translating it in real time and mm. sometimes they'll leave it to the director to make it sound American but not so far into something else. Simple stuff like the as opposed to the or as opposed to and then and go over here as opposed to and then go like you know little small liberties but never anything big enough to take away from here we go the closed captioning that they've probably already done because our English dub is probably one of the last dubbings they do out of all of them. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. Last yeah. one. Jeez. Yeah. 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 I, like, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I know that other countries are doing theirs, but we're usually like two, three weeks. No, well, we're usually like two months before this stuff airs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes it's longer, but traditionally you record it and you look up and you're like, Oh snap, that's coming out. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right. I don't think I got my check yet. Did I get my check yet? <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. It's, it's very, very cool. And the technology is better. And the, uh, the cohesiveness of all the directors together, you know, you got uh, your African director, your La Latin America director, your Central mm -hmm. America director, your uh, Japanese director, your this. That. It's like you got to think all these people got to put this together and deliver it so that it can get put into it and then get out to all the masses because 
it premieres on Netflix on Tuesday. So it's like mm-hmm. that thing is fascinating. Same thing for Disney as well. It's just it's it's, it's an amazing job. You're involved in music, charity yes. streaming, and acting. How do these different aspects of your creative life complement each other? Uh, the charity is just the want to help. I think that's the Cub Scout we blow away <laughs> to all my scouts out there. <laughs> um, that I think that, you know, you're, you're five or six at your church and it's like, we're going to start a troop and you learn about community. And then uh, I think from living in L.A., living around so many minorities and just neighborhoods used to help each other. Mm. Hey, go, go help her with her garbage. Her son's away at college, help her with her garbage. Mm -hmm. Her husband works late, carry her groceries in, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. It, 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 it it teaches you to want to help people. Mm. So, um, I think the blood drive is because of the acting. If it wasn't for the acting, I wouldn't be doing the blood drive. And if it wasn't for the community, I wouldn't be doing the blood drive either. The music is a passion and the music helped me with my voiceover. My very first job was me beatboxing a Christmas carol. And that is why I got the job because I did it so different than anybody. Everybody, like I said, they were reading it. You know, mm-hmm. reading it this way, reading it that way, trying to make it cool, like, hey, but I did it like a beatbox with some scratching. And they were like, him, 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 bring him in. And so that started me. So thank God for that. So mm. uh, always love for hip hop. And then from there, being able to sing in the Saints Row games, freaking great. And then now, even with NBC. I literally in the middle of a session, I said, like we were doing it and they said, do something different. And I remember, like you remember as a little kid, they used to go ding, ding, ding at the end of shows. So I started Mm -hmm. saying NBC and I've been doing that for five years. (laughs) I just, cause I just did it. No one told me to, I just did it. Cause I was like, (laughs) whatever i got the job whatever i'm gonna do it and i just did it and then everybody was like yes so i've done that i've been like boom 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 or i've done uh tuesday night so it's always these things that are like so i'm like i live a fantastic life bro i live a fantastic life i'm like i wish i could i wish i could get the kid and be like come look come look dude i trust me come look i know I, i'm you why are you so fat dude stop <laughs> <laughs> I was really mean when I was a kid. <laughs> Look at fat, so he says he's me. <laughs> uh, but I've learned to be a better person now. Uh, but it, it, I, I wish I could let him know that he's going to be okay. You know, because it's like it's it's different. Mm. It's different. But the uh, promo, ADR, all these different things have all come together to help me, whether it's streaming. I use what I get from ADR and radio when I stream. Hey, everybody, welcome to the ASK Blood Drive. Today, we're going to be raising money for such and such. That's all radio. That's all, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, And then the musical aspect, when you're ADRing a film, you know, everybody's like, hey, hey. And it's like, no, 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 no. We actually get people that almost like a choir, okay, Watch a reef. All right. Clap. Clap. Okay. Now move. And, you, and you're just getting the people clapping to get rhythmic sections and then be like, hey, yeah, I know. Hey, girl. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you're doing that. Sometimes it, most of the time it's me on the other side. Sometimes I get to do that and tell them what to do or go up and be like, hey, try it like this to get more of a thing. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, Arif said, do 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 do. It's like, all right, and we run it like that. Mm-hmm. So, so every little thing of your life has culminated to help everything in another way, and um, yeah. And then the main thing for the ASK Blood Drive is to connect us digitally because we were in a pandemic, but 
in the physical and when you're in los angeles we do the blood drive at children's hospital of los angeles we get the pint of blood from everybody if somebody's feeling frisky and they want to give platelets we get some platelets uh because that takes longer and then we take you into a vip room and you'll get to hang out with steve bloom courtney taylor uh maybe a jp carlick maybe a eric bowser you know uh maybe a uh 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 katero colbert um which is actually my cousin uh and then you'll get to hang out with Roz ryan and kim kimberly brooks because these are my colleagues so you don't have to go to comic-con help me save a life i'll put you in the room with them and we make the whole room around like around the outskirts of the room video game stations so we do uh, everything from from the original PlayStation. Yes, I still own it. Uh, mm. And then we go uh, Xbox 360 and up. And I think we'll end up bringing a PC in before it's all over. But we have that all around. A TV for each one, controllers for each one, and we allow people Ooh. if they want to do, if they want to donate financially, they can. And we put that money back into everything that we're doing. Uh, and we have snacks. We've partnered with people from time to time where we're able to give away swag since the pandemic. Ooh. We haven't been able to do that. And but we've raised enough blood to help kids do surgeries. That that's the part. You know what I'm saying? And then Aww. I don't know how I don't know how they do it, but if people donate in your name, they give you credit. I don't know what that means. I, I theoretically know what it means. It's like it helps, like, oh hey, this person helps, so let's give them I don't know if they're giving you better treatment or if they're able to exchange the blood that you gave to count towards you for maybe another blood bank, maybe they can send out our non matching blood. I don't know how they do it, but I know you get credit for it. And so I'm always happy to do stuff like that. I'm always happy because you're helping children and I have two kids. So it's like, it changes your mm. life. It, you know, especially when you have a kid, it, it really changes your life and your want to help other people who have kids because you know how precious they are. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's the ASK Blood Drive. And the reason I'm the co-founder, because my wife is the one that told me to do it. And we actually have a nonprofit because we do stuff for multiple sclerosis because my wife is a little over it. She's like 11 years having uh, multiple sclerosis. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So we do that to help to generate any type of information, any way of you giving money. Like when we do, when we do the stream, I never see the money. That money goes to multi, the MS Society or it goes to the Children's Miracle Network through Extra Life. So mm -hmm. I never see the money. So Children's Hospital gets that money. It's, it's very joyous to do that and, and to be able to see that it makes a difference. And it and it helps people. It, it, it it's uh what do they say? They said, uh, what do you want for your birthday? Well, help me help people, because what I want for my birthday you cannot afford. <clears throat> and it's rude for me to ask you. Oh, you want what do you want for your birthday? Okay, give me plane, give me private jet. You <laughs> mm, asked what I wanted. <laughs> yes, give here you go. <laughs> give me give me two MacBook Pros. <laughs> it's like it's absurd what i want so it's like no help me help some kids that's that'll be enough i'll go to work and get the rest of it <laughs> for the charity streaming where do you normally stream twitch and uh mm -hmm. i i've been trying to make facebook gaming work it, it hasn't happened but i keep trying <laughs> challenge for facebook gaming it's yeah. It's kind of behind on things. Uh, I've tried Facebook gaming. It's not as easy as Twitch. Yeah. It's uh, more challenging than YouTube, in yes. my opinion. <laughs> yes. If I put it if I put it up on Twitch or on YouTube, people are communicating with me, saying hi, checking in. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else, it's like, uh, I had to set up a TikTok because of the new Transformers movie coming out. So with mm. us doing the 40th anniversary, they recommended it. So I did it and mm -hmm. with the streamily signing. So we did that, but I just saw a young lady today and I'm mad because the guy asked me a question. So I put the phone in my pocket. Now I got to find her again. She had a three tier, <laughs> she had a three tier stream and I thought it was smart. It was her face. It's the game. And then her hand, her, her, her hands using the controller. I was like, 
-hmm. oh, that's actually kind of cool. Or at least having maybe some information at the very bottom if you didn't want to have your hands. Like maybe you don't have a manicure. <laughs> so you don't want to, <laughs> like, no, don't look at my hands. <laughs> so um, I was like, that's very interesting. I said, I may try that. If it if it works, then great. If it doesn't, whatever. But yeah, <laughs> so the, the whole, like going all the back, the whole thing with the acting is to continue to grow as an artist but to use mm -hmm. those gifts and that notoriety to help others. And then what are your future aspirations in your career? Are there specific types of roles or projects you're hoping to pursue? Um, I want to be on screen in the Marvel movie uh, and on screen in a DC movie as well. Uh, to show up in a Transformers movie would be phenomenal. Voice or on camera. On camera would be great. And I think they should do that for Peter Cullen. I think they should do <laughs> that for him. Uh, badly. He should have a cameo like a Stan Lee style. Uh, but to just work on, on one of the Transformer movies would be phenomenal. Because I really, I, it's my childhood. And, uh, to work on whenever they finally do Macross, whenever mm. they do Robotech, I don't know when they're going to do it, but whenever they do it, to work on there in some thing, like, you know, even if, if it's a voice, then let me be the voice of someone in a ship that you never see their human form, but you just see them in the ship fighting. I would love that, but not something where I just get killed right off. Mm. <laughs> And uh, last but not least, uh, having the ASK Blood Drive be up there with some of our more not notarized streamers. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like to be able to be recognized as a force for good and uh, people donate on a more of a consistent level. The, mm. the, the thing is, it's, it's never about me there's a tip jar if you want to do that but the thing is if we could consistently raise five thousand dollars a year for children's hospital i'm quite sure that would make a difference i'm quite sure oh yeah help out, you know what i'm saying so if everybody gave like five ten fifteen it would be great but i get it we are a culture and nation of people who are just trying to get by so i get mm -hmm. it but Every time I see someone buy tickets that are a thousand dollars for people who are very famous, I I get it, but you could be helping out a charity. <laughs> you, you could you can make Starbucks at home. I I, I know you can. They have K they have K cups. <laughs> yeah, you know, remind me of when I do grocery shopping or when I am shopping instead of like I'm in like TJ Maxx and I see something and I'm thinking that could be for groceries. And then for you, it's those tickets could be for the charity. It's like, Help a kid out. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. You know, on a human level, everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to make a lot of money. But mm -hmm. if I can just be sustained and have more than just a little, and people get helped i don't really i don't count that as a bad thing i count that as a, right? as, a as a great big life a great big life and then what advice would you give to aspiring actors and voice actors based on your own experience take an acting class and uh that goes for both especially for voiceover actors there's a lot of people that come into voiceover that are like well, why would I need to learn how to act? Because you're going to be doing a lot of different characters. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't understand that. They're like, oh, I can do an anime voice. Okay. Can you do 15? Can you do 10? Can you do five? Okay. Or are you always the one trick pony? You need to mm -hmm. be able to be diversified to be able to do something a little bit different. And here goes the thing. Your voice may be different versions of yourself but can you hold that different version of yourself in character and mean it and 
convey that to us? Or are you just making a quick voice and then you slide back into who you are anyway? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you want to make this a career, great. If you want to do this as a hobby, continue to do fan cast. Please don't come on our side of the lawn. Really, because it's Ooh. like there's people out here really working and busting their butts. There, mm-hmm. there's, there, there, there's a brand new surplus of phenomenal female voiceover artists who are killing it on regular commercials, promos, all this stuff. I don't want somebody to come in because like, oh, I shout cast sometimes, so I, I, I should be good at this. Like, there's a person that can be earning a great career for this. But if that mm. shoutcaster actually has acting chops and they're only shoutcasting to get to the next level, you better come on in and get this bread, girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> come on in. Yeah, man. We're going to leave the door open for you. You've been training. Come on. <laughs> and, and then also not to take themselves too seriously. It's easy to beat yourself up. Mm. It's easy to beat yourself up. Just do the job and go home. Rem- like do the audition forget about it forget about it i have worked video games so many times that i auditioned for in february and it's august you're like huh which one was that oh oh yeah 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 yeah. because there's so many other things that are going on that you don't know about we don't have enough money to finish the game we're talking to people mm-hmm. to give us more money Oh, the investors want to pause for a second because they want us to fix the way that the game looks. Mm. Uh, It's all these things, you know what I'm saying? Or our company is being sold to this other company, but we're still going to finish the game. You're thinking, oh, it it doesn't exist anymore. It might. And every audition should be done like it's your first audition or your last. Mm. Because if you keep that in in that frame of mind, you'll never just do it to do it. These auditions should not be throwaways. These are people that really do this for a living that mean it. Mm. And that are really some of the people you love and you admire. So if you really love them and admire, honor them by giving the same that they would. You know what I'm saying? You can't just, oh, I'm going to do this because I want to. Yeah, you can. But are you going to be better for it or are you going to make us look worse? Sort of like that intent, kind of like the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You think it'll come, but you got to think of beyond that and ensure that it'll come together. Yes, yes. Look further, as they say. Look Mm -hmm. down the highway, not just the car in front of you. (laughs) (laughs) And then looking back, is there a particular accomplishment or moment in your career that you're especially proud of? If so, why? House Party, mm. Sparks, Boost Mobile, NBC, and Pixar. Okay, so House Party, self-explanatory. Sparks, series lead, ex- explanatory. Uh, mm-hmm. Then Boost Mobile, the voice of a brand that I actually admired for numerous years. That's a big deal. Uh, and I got to follow in the footsteps of James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones was the voice of, G- of GTE, the phone company. And that I think, I think it became AT&T, but he used to be like the guy, press five. Or like, you know, like, please hold to speak to someone. It's like, James Earl Jones did that. Okay, that's super cool. And then NBC, uh, being able to do promo. I I didn't even know what that was. I, I I had no idea. And it was like, this is so fascinating. And I had a chance to do it once and I didn't get the job. So I fought hard to get the job I have now. And I love it. I freaking love it. And lastly, uh, Pixar. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a kid that has loved cartoons and Disney and films for years. I saw mm-hmm. Toy Story in the movie theater. I saw my wife and I went to go see Bugs Life at the El Capitan in Hollywood. So to work on Pixar films has been, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's phenomenal, but it's like, what? Are you serious, bro? Oh, yeah, cool. 
what <laughs> so it's very 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 fun and then yeah yeah and it's and it's all it's all in service of my kids watching it happen it's all in service of my wife mm. sacrificing so much so that i can run here and run there and it's all in service of that little kid that goofy talking too much in the back of the class kid he de he deserves this he deserves this well, thank you so much, Ari, for sharing your incredible journey, insights, and experiences with us today. Your you. passion for acting, voice acting, music, and in charitable endeavors shines through in everything you're doing. And where can everybody find you besides oh, the charity streams? At symbol, A-R-I-F-S as in Sam, K-I-N-C-H-E-N. Almost everywhere. Almost everywhere. I got rid of my Twitter when Elon came. I'm just saying. I stand on that. I stand on business. <laughs> it's Kung Fu Kenny right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, everywhere else, basically. And then, of course, the ASK Blood Drive uh, is everywhere. Uh, you know, the at symbol ASK B-L-O-O-D-D-R-I-V-E. So ASK Blood Drive. And, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been working on a passion project. I will be streaming more realistically come August, but I will be sporadic. But what I'm working on, I have I don't really talk about too much in the public, but it's like it's a lot of brain time, a lot of brain time. And I'm I'm almost, I'm halfway done. Halfway done. So all the handle names and links will have them in the description. So yeah. listeners, everyone who's watching, if you wanna get to know about all this more, those links and handles will be available for you in the description now let me make sure i do this right lehoa did i say it right lehua. 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 okay here we go <laughs> lehua you are an amazing host fascinating and you let me write your name down phonetically i'm i, I love it <laughs> and you make them say your name right you never shy away from that they used to call me marif tarif larif garif anything they could say N <laughs> now look at me i go to the store and no one knows who i am <laughs> well we've gained so much valuable insights into the diverse world of entertainment the dedication that it takes you to succeed in such a competitive industry so we really appreciate you sharing your advice and wisdom which will undoubtedly inspire many aspiring actors and voice actors everywhere hopefully so we wish you continued success in all your future endeavors and look forward to seeing your upcoming projects both on screen and behind the mic so thank you for joining us on podcasts across worlds thank you <laughs> and everybody who is listening keep reading manga keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds we'll see you on the next one ahoy ho thank you for listening to podcasts across worlds this is a passion project that was created by lehua superfina and is co-hosted by myself Mikhail casanova if you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Superfina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around. <laughs>